Nestled in the cinematic landscape of 1973, the film Lost Horizon beckons viewers into a realm where utopia clashes with the complexities of human nature. As you reflect on this classic, does a particular scene linger in your memory, leaving an indelible mark on your cinematic journey? Or perhaps it's the enduring qualities of the movie that have cemented its status as a timeless symbol within the industry. Now, let's embark on a journey of shared experiences. What cherished memory or personal connection do you hold dear in relation to this film? Your stories and reflections breathe life into the collective tapestry of Lost Horizon enthusiasts. Share your anecdotes and perspectives in the comments below. We're eager to hear the echoes of your cinematic journey. And now, a captivating segue into the heart of the matter. Did you know that during the filming, unexpected challenges became the stepping stones to creativity? These random facts about Lost Horizon peel back the layers of production, offering a unique glimpse into the intricate web of decisions that shaped the final masterpiece. Your stories, like those behind the scenes, add depth to the legacy of this cinematic gem. So join the conversation, share your thoughts, and let the communal appreciation for Lost Horizon continue to flourish. Lost Horizon, a 1973 film, is a cinematic adaptation of James Hilton's classic novel of the same name. Directed by Charles Jarrett, the story unfolds as a group of diverse individuals finds themselves stranded in the mystical and idyllic Shangri-La, a hidden utopia in the Himalayas. The narrative revolves around the protagonist, played by Peter Finch, as he grapples with the paradise's allure and the philosophical conundrums presented by its enigmatic leader, portrayed by John Gielgud. The film's origins trace back to Hilton's timeless tale, exploring themes of utopia, human nature, and the pursuit of happiness against the backdrop of a turbulent world. The characters, each grappling with personal conflicts and societal challenges, contribute to the film's depth and emotional resonance. The iconic portrayal of Shangri-La, with its breathtaking scenery and captivating ambience, sets the stage for a thought-provoking journey that transcends time and place. Lost Horizon distinguishes itself with its unique blend of adventure, drama, and philosophical introspection. The film's style, characterized by lush cinematography and a haunting musical score, captures the essence of Hilton's vision. The exploration of utopia and the human psyche resonated with audiences, leaving a lasting impact on popular culture. The enduring allure of Shangri-La and the moral dilemmas faced by its inhabitants have sparked discussions and adaptations across various mediums, cementing Lost Horizon's place in the cultural tapestry. In retrospect, Lost Horizon stands as a cinematic gem that seamlessly weaves together timeless themes and captivating visuals. Its influence is evident in subsequent works that grapple with the complexities of utopia, making it a touchstone in the exploration of human nature and the quest for an elusive paradise. The film's legacy endures, an emblem of storytelling that transcends generations and continues to inspire contemplation on the human condition. In 1973, Lost Horizon, a cinematic adaptation of James Hilton's classic novel, brought together an ensemble cast for an ambitious project. Notably, a television special promoting the film aired that year, featuring stars like Richard Harris and Sammy Davis Jr. This promotional effort aimed to build anticipation for the movie, showcasing the involvement of well-known personalities. Behind the scenes, producer Ross Hunter transitioned to Columbia Pictures for Lost Horizon after a successful career with Universal Pictures. This marked a significant shift in his career trajectory, as the film, despite his previous string of hits, turned out to be both a creative and commercial challenge. In fact, it proved to be Hunter's last venture with Columbia Pictures, capping off a two-decade run of cinematic successes. During the filming, John Gielgud, portraying an enigmatic leader in the movie, faced physical discomfort on set. The heat during the shoot, especially for scenes requiring yards of fox fur in a simulated blizzard, posed challenges. Gielgud's accounts of enduring the elements and the effort put into creating the canyon set provide a glimpse into the practical realities of filmmaking. Despite the on-set hardships, Gielgud found solace in staying at Gladys Cooper's former bungalow in Santa Monica and his well-equipped caravan at the Fox Ranch. This behind-the-scenes insight into the making of Lost Horizon offers a perspective on the challenges faced by the cast and crew during production. From the star-studded TV special to the pivotal shift in the producer's career and the physical demands on actors, these aspects contribute to the broader narrative surrounding the 1973 cinematic adaptation of James Hilton's timeless tale. In a 1975 interview, producer Ross Hunter openly acknowledged the challenges faced by the 1973 movie Lost Horizon. 
he revealed that the soundtrack, composed by Bacharach and David, faced complications due to the duo's imminent dissolution. The score, considered subpar, presented a hurdle for the production team as they were already deep into pre-production when it was delivered. Hunter's candid admission sheds light on a critical aspect of the film's struggles, as the soundtrack's failure became a notable factor in the overall reception of Lost Horizon. The impact on backers was so substantial that the movie earned the industry moniker The Lost Investment. This financial setback underscored the difficulties encountered during the making of the film, adding another layer to the narrative of Lost Horizon's 1973 adaptation. The 1973 cinematic adaptation of James Hilton's classic novel faced harsh criticism and financial setbacks, earning it the industry moniker, The Lost Investment. Esquire magazine labeled it the worst movie of the year, and critic William Wolfe didn't hold back, calling it atrocious, lame-brained. Some $6 million was spent on this worst of worst remake. Despite attempts to build anticipation with a star-studded TV special, the film proved to be a creative and commercial challenge for producer Ross Hunter, marking the end of his two-decade run with Columbia Pictures. The soundtrack, composed by Bacharach and David, added to the woes, facing complications due to the duo's dissolution and contributing to the overall struggles faced during production. Today, it's listed among the 100 most enjoyably bad movies ever made in the Golden Raspberry Award founder John Wilson's book, The Official Razzie Movie Guide. The 1973 adaptation's journey from ambitious project to industry disappointment sheds light on the difficulties encountered behind the scenes, making it a noteworthy chapter in cinematic history. In the realm of American cinema during the 1970s, a unique production emerged, distinct in its journey from screen to home viewing. Unlike its peers, this film, a cinematic adaptation of James Hilton's classic novel, took a peculiar path in the realm of home entertainment. Strangely absent from the VHS shelves of the U.S., it wasn't until the early 1990s that a limited edition Laserdisc offered a glimpse into Shangri-La. A curious delay, it wasn't until 2011 that Sony finally granted access to this cinematic gem on the DVD format. This peculiar trajectory, marked by a scarcity in home releases, adds a layer of intrigue to the narrative of the 1973 adaptation of Hilton's timeless tale. As the film unfolded on the big screen, the behind-the-scenes reality presented a stark contrast to the lush reputation of its producer, Ross Hunter. Michael York, a key player in the ensemble cast, voiced his candid opinion on the set's aesthetics, labeling the decor as tacky. Filming the lamissary scenes under the scorching Burbank sun during a hot summer only intensified the contrast, leading York to humorously dub the location Shangri-La in the smog. This first-hand account sheds light on the unexpected challenges faced during the film's production, providing a glimpse into the less glamorous aspects of bringing Shangri-La to life. Beyond the film itself, Lost Horizon transcended the confines of the screen, leaving an imprint on popular culture that extended to the world of fashion and lifestyle. The influence of Shangri-La wasn't confined to the silver screen. Rather, it manifested in the form of a line of costume jewelry, watches, and belts crafted by Pierre Carton, all inspired by the cinematic journey. Marrakech, Limited, Periphery, Rigier, and Brown Jordan also contributed to the Shangri-La aesthetic with their respective lines of attire, colognes, soaps, and rattan furniture. This intersection of cinema and consumer products reveals the lasting impact of the film's visual allure, transcending the boundaries of entertainment into the realms of fashion and lifestyle. In retrospect, the 1973 cinematic adaptation of James Hilton's classic novel while facing its share of challenges on the screen, carved a unique path beyond the theaters. From a delayed presence in home video formats to the candid observations of its cast and the unexpected influence on fashion and lifestyle, Lost Horizon's journey extends far beyond its cinematic runtime. The tale of Shangri-La, it seems, found a way to weave itself into the fabric of everyday life. As we bid adieu to our cinematic journey through the mystical realms of that unforgettable celluloid tapestry, I invite you, dear reader, to traverse the corridors of your memories and let the echoes of Lost Horizon resonate within your soul. Allow the whispers of Shangri-La to linger, stirring the cauldron of nostalgia for that golden era of storytelling. Reflect upon the ethereal landscapes and characters, each frame a brushstroke in the masterpiece that is your personal connection to this cinematic gem. Did you find a piece of yourself in the enigmatic wisdom of the High Lama or the unyielding spirit of those who sought refuge in the Hidden Valley? Perhaps, like the characters, you too have discovered your own Shangri-La sanctuary in the recesses of your heart. 
In this age of fleeting moments and fast-paced narratives, Lost Horizon stands as a testament to the enduring power of storytelling to transport us to realms unknown. Share with us your musings, your cherished moments, and the fragments of wisdom that have lingered in your thoughts. Let the tapestry of your experiences weave seamlessly with the threads of this classic, creating a tableau of shared reflections. As the curtain descends on our discourse, I extend my heartfelt gratitude for embarking on this odyssey through the cinematic sands of time. Your time and contemplation are the true treasures of this expedition, and I am genuinely thankful for your presence in this shared space. May the echoes of Shangri-La continue to resonate within you, and may the memories of Lost Horizon remain a cherished tapestry in the fabric of your cinematic voyage. Until our narratives intertwine once more, I bid you farewell.